Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about Hanukkah and why I believe it could turn out to be a very special event in the year 2022. That's right, we're going to be talking about dates and prophecies in this video and how they could be actually pointing to the Feast of Dedication in the year 2022. So what we're going to do is step down through several passages from scripture related to end time events, at least the ones I think are relevant to this season that we're in. So go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and be prepared to leave a comment as we go. The purpose of this video is to get the word out and by doing those things, you help others to have the chance to know that these particular events are upon us and they won't be surprised if and when they see them. The way I understand scripture, the enemy already knows what's coming, maybe even has a better idea of when than I do, but is planning on using those end time events to trick people and to confuse people and will use them as bait for their traps. So. Let's make sure everybody has the chance to hear what the scripture has to say about these end time events, just in case something does happen on Hanukkah in the year 2022. And you can do so by hitting the like button and leaving a comment, even sharing this video. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. We're looking over here in Revelation chapter 8, which is the gist of what we're talking about. Like we read there in verse 1, talking about the seventh seal. We understand from the Third Testament of the Bible that we are living now in the sixth seal even in the half hour of silence leading up to this seventh seal. This half hour of silence is when the 144,000 was actually getting their seal. We covered in a video not too long ago that this sealing process started in 1975 and will end around the sabbatical year or the Jubilee year, which will start in the spring of 2023 and 2024 respectively. But notice how they, the 144,000, and that multitude which no man can number, get their seal all before the seventh seal is opened. Again, we're looking here in chapter 7, but the events of the seventh seal doesn't occur until chapter 8, which is how we understand that this sailing process occurs during the half hour of silence, which we're in now. But this brings us to our first clue, looking here in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9, because we see that this multitude that no man can number, which is made up of all nations, all kindreds, all people, all tongues or languages, this group is made up of everybody, unlike the 144,000. But just like those guys, these are clothed in white robes and have palm branches in their hands. This is pointing to the instructions or what some people call the law, particularly the feast days. These guys get their robes made white during the feast of Passover and they get the palms in their hands during the Feast of Tabernacles. This is what separates them from the rest of humanity, which will be leaving here in these end time events. Those that will remain will be those who will be obedient to the instructions or those laws. Which brings us to our next clue, which comes out of Daniel and chapter 9 which is talking about the covenant that will be made with many for one week. This is talking about seven years when our Messiah or Elijah or our father in heaven, hallowed be his name, will come and reaffirm the covenant with his disciples, which include the multitude that no man can number and the 144,000 for seven years. That's what it's telling us here. 
I realized in the absence of a lot of the hidden books and apocryphal books, a lot of this gets confused, which I believe is the reason why they took many of the books out of the Bible in the first place is because they wanted us confused. But when we look back at verse 26, it's clear that it's talking about our Messiah and how he is going to confirm this covenant in verse 27. One of these books that they want hidden from you is the third testament of the Bible. This is the third part of the trilogy. You've heard about the Old Testament. You've heard about the New Testament. Well, those would be the first two testaments, while this one is the third testament of the Bible. This is where we get the information about the seven seals and a lot of clarity on at the end time events. But we also hear this covenant mentioned down in chapter 55 and verse 7. It is basically repeating what we heard over there in Daniel. How the Messiah would renew the covenant with his disciples for seven years. Well, verse 7 out of chapter 55 says, When those chosen by me find themselves reunited round my law, the earth and the stars will be shaken. And in the sky, there will be signs. So this is talking about something special happening once this covenant building period is up, which I believe started in the year 2015, particularly spring of 2015, when most of us, I learned through testimony, felt the calling of our father on their lives and were drawn back into the law. Just as an aside note, let me jump you over to the keys of Enoch. I want to show you something down here in the last key, 318 and verse 43, where it's talking about this new program or what many would refer to as the new covenant or the new era. This is talking about the time after the wicked has been removed from the planet and humanity goes through a paradigm shift, a brand new existence with a new heaven and a new earth. That's what the apocalypse is all about. Basically cleansing the earth of all unrighteousness, leaving only the righteous seed behind, which John refers to as the 144,000 and the multitude that no man can number. But notice here in verse 43, that is talking about the year 1976. That's the year after the Jubilee year, which was 1975. But notice how it talks about these different levels of people that would recognize that something is going on here. It says that in the 1980s, a certain group of people will come to the recognition while others won't realize anything is going on until around the year 2004. But I did the math on this and these seem to occur every seven years or something like that, which helps us to understand what actually occurred back there in 2015. If you're putting all of this together, that's what the third testament of the Bible, verse 97 in chapter 55 is talking about the vibrating echo of the trumpet. Some of those people may have heard this vibrating echo back there in 1975 or 1976. And if that was the first trumpet blast, then 2015 would have been the seventh trumpet or the last trumpet calling our father's people to be reunited around the law. Like verse 98 talks about becoming repentant and getting an overwhelming desire to return to doing things according to our father's will. All that to say that 2015, which was heralded in by that tetrad in the sky, was what I believe to be the beginning of this seven year covenant building period that Daniel talked about in chapter nine. But while we're in Daniel, Let's come over to chapter 12 and show you something else very interesting. You see, at the beginning of chapter 12, he's talking about the dead rising there, where he says, them that sleep in the dust of the earth. That's the same thing that the Third Testament was talking about when it was talking about these trumpets over there. 
Then notice down in verse 10 how he's talking about many shall be purified and made white. Again, referring to them repenting and being reunited around the law. But then notice that he goes on to tell them when this would occur. When you follow this out, what we learn is that this blessing is supposed to occur in the year 2022. Actually, January of the year 2022, which would begin the seventh year of this covenant building period that will end around Hanukkah or Purim being the last feast days of the year. So what I'm understanding here is that Jacob started receiving these blessings in January. But because Jacob is still making his transformation into Israel, it's at the end of this year long cycle that Jacob may start to actually receive these blessings. This is what the Messiah was talking about when he was talking about the acceptable year of the Lord. It's one thing to say you are a disciple, but it's actually another thing to meet all of the markers throughout the year, like those who have their robes purified in the spring and the palm branches in their hand in the fall. And that acceptable year, I believe, could end with the Feast of Hanukkah which is the dedication period for the temple. Talking about that third temple, which will be built on the hearts of the disciples. Don't let nobody confuse you thinking that it matters whether they build a brick and mortar temple. The only temple that actually matters this time is the spiritual temple, which is made up of us being the stones. We will be the bricks of the third temple. That is what the dedication is all about, is the dedication of the temple. And that's why I think that Hanukkah could actually be special this year. And if you're wondering why this year in particular, well, we learn over in the book of Jasher in chapter 80 that Moses returned two years before the apocalypse. And since the half hour of silence in Revelation 8 started in 1975, it will end in the year 2024, making two years earlier the year 2022. This can be the time that we hear over in Malachi chapter 4 that Elijah will return before the great and dreadful day of the Lord that we read about in Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8 is when the trumpets actually start to blow. But notice that Malachi says that Elijah will return before that event. And Moses was a type of Elijah. He was actually the first Elijah with our Messiah being the second Elijah. We're now waiting for the third Elijah, who, just like the Messiah and Moses, is expected to come two or three years early. Think about it. Three years would have put us back in about January of the year 2022. And two years will put us sometime around now. But notice again, it's referring to the law or the instructions up there in verse four. Let me pull up a different translation of Malachi chapter four, verse four, which actually says the word instruction so that it can make more sense to people. A lot of people get confused when you tell them that we are supposed to be obeying the law. Even though they obey man's laws every day, wouldn't dare break one of those. When it comes to biblical laws, things stop making sense for them. But when we put in the word instruction there, it actually starts to make sense. The laws are the instructions for surviving the apocalypse. That's what the Bible is all about. You heard them say the basic instructions before leaving earth. Well, to me, it's basic instructions before the level event, which is what the apocalypse will be, a extinction level event, no doubt. Praise our Father in heaven, hallowed be his name, for leaving us with instructions for surviving it. But anyway, we're talking about Hanukkah or the Feast of Dedication, which also includes the first day of the 10th month, the Day of Remembrance. And we read that that was a very special time for Noah 
back there in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 5, because that was the day in which the tops of the mountains were seen. After the flood, after the ark had rested on Mount Ararat and the water had started to decrease off the face of the earth. And I believe that can be symbolic of what's going on here around the Feast of Dedication. But that's not the only clue. Another one we get is in the book of John chapter 10 and verse 22, which is talking about the Feast of Dedication. And we see in verse 23 that not only did our Messiah attend at the Feast of Dedication, but when we look down, we see one of the most important speeches or sermons that he ever gave was during the Feast of Dedication in the following verses. That was actually the time when he told them plainly that he and the Creator are the same being. But notice verse 27 says, how his sheep will hear his voice. Well, this voice is talking about the vibrating echo of the trumpet that we read about in the Third Testament as they get reunited around this law. So the way I believe all of this is working or has worked is that we started to be called in in the year 2015. That's when he started pressing on our hearts who we were and the importance of being obedient he even started teaching us the calendar back there in 2015. And since then, we have been learning how to live within the laws again, how to keep the feast days correctly, how to keep the Sabbath days correctly, and how to be obedient to the statutes, the commands, the commandments, and the judgments in general. And at the beginning of the year 2022, we started receiving blessings, but I believe that something special could happen here in the end of the year 2022, after we've proven ourselves in this acceptable day of the Lord. Will it be the Elijah spirit returning? Will it be the earth and the stars shaking? Will it be the blessings of Daniel? Will it be the great awakening? I don't know. All I know is something special could happen here in late 2022 or early 2023 and I just wanted to make you guys aware of it just in case something does so that you don't be caught off guard and so those children of darkness can't use it to deceive you and make you think you're crazy or something like that whatever it is we need to be praying for our father's will so let me know what you think it'll be in the comment section and I'll see you there